If you have any travel plans in the middle of your hyperbaric protocol, there are absolutely some things you need to know about when you can or cannot fly in an airplane in and around those sessions. In hyperbaric medicine, we have comparisons to scuba diving all the time. One, because they're quite similar, actually. And two, because most of the history and the development of hyperbaric medicine really started as a result of health issues from scuba diving. And so there are so many correlations between the two. One of them is the timing of when you can or cannot fly based on when your last hyperbaric dive or your last scuba dive happened to be. Now, in scuba, you're typically breathing either air only or slightly enriched oxygen, meaning air is 21% oxygen, or you could dive on nitrox, which could be 30% oxygen or 35% oxygen or 40% oxygen, a very specific measured amount. In those cases, we can then figure out how much oxygen you were getting. And the difference of the gas that you were getting that wasn't oxygen is nitrogen. And ultimately, this whole conversation about flying after diving is all about nitrogen. And it's all about the possibilities of decompression illness or the bends from coming to the surface too quickly or getting in an airplane which goes even higher above the Earth's surface. And so how do we avoid hurting ourselves after these dives? That's really what we're after in asking this question. In hyperbaric medicine, you could be breathing air. You might be in a chamber that is pressurized with air and all your breathing is air. And there are benefits to that in terms of the clinical effectiveness of pressurized air. You may also be getting some percentage of oxygen, like 94% uh, oxygen or 80% oxygen through a mask. You might be getting 100% oxygen through a mask. You could be getting 100% oxygen through a hood, or you could be in a hyperbaric chamber that's pressurized with 100% oxygen. Therefore, you know that what you're breathing is 100% oxygen. So here's the breakdown. If you're breathing 100% oxygen and you're 100% confident that you were breathing 100% oxygen, by default, you can say that the nitrogen load that you got under pressure was zero. So as long as you got zero nitrogen, and nitrogen is really the gas that we're concerned with, then you could leave your hyperbaric experience, get right on an airplane and go fly because you didn't get any increased nitrogen exposure in that time. Outside of that particular conversation, you may not know exactly what percentage of oxygen a patient got and what percentage of nitrogen a patient got. So we have to now default back to the rules around scuba which are after a dive, the absolute minimum period of time between your scuba diving and your flight should be 12 hours. And it's recommended to even wait 24 hours just to be absolutely safe. So if you're on air, 21% oxygen, or even 30% oxygen, really the best bet is that minimum 12 hours, recommended 24 hours, then you can go home, get on an airplane, or go on vacation wherever you're going. Now there's this huge space in the middle. A patient could have been getting a lot more than 30% oxygen. They could have been getting 80 or 90%, but they were wearing a mask, and maybe that mask wasn't a perfectly well-fitted mask, and some of the air from the sides of that mask are going in when that patient's breathing. And so even though you were piping in 90% oxygen, they were pulling in some of that with some 21% oxygen from the air, and now they got some combination. Was it 60% oxygen? Was it 75% oxygen? Was it, was it 94% oxygen? If you don't know, the best thing to do is just err on the side of caution and say, listen, if you got a mixed gas, you got some enriched oxygen, but you also probably got some air in that same period of time, your best bet is to just know that you got some nitrogen under pressure, and we would just err back to the rules of scuba. Minimum, 12 hours, recommended 24. If you can fit people into that 12 to 24 hour range, you know that at least that they're taking the steps that they need to stay safe. Hope you enjoy that. Hope it's helpful for you. If you have anybody that you know, patients or uh, friends or uh, other family members that might be in the middle of a hyperbaric protocol and you know that they might have a trip planned somewhere in there, share this video with them. Let them know what the right thing to do is. If you find this information helpful, please like the video, please subscribe to this channel. Every time you do that, that helps us get discovered by more people so that we can answer their questions too. Thanks for your attention and we'll see you next time. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches 
this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are going to be.